Conflict is defined as a serious disagreement or argument, which arises due to opposing desires or needs, or as a result of differing opinions, values, or interests that seem incompatible. In the last lesson, we discussed the five basic conflict management strategies. These five strategies lie on a continuum that varies in the level of assertiveness and cooperation. Each of these strategies can be useful depending on the scenario and the details of the conflict. It is important to exercise positive conflict resolution skills in order to maintain healthy relationships and avoid emotional injury or physical violence. Handling conflict effectively depends on learning some specific skills that enable us to bypass personal differences and open our minds to new possibilities. It requires a shift from viewing the other person as an adversary to seeing them as a cooperative partner. Conflict resolution skills can draw us closer to other people as we strive to find fair solutions that balance the needs of everyone involved. Following are 12 conflict resolution skills that when practiced, can result in positive changes to interpersonal relationships. Managing your emotions is an important skill to apply while working toward conflict resolution. Anger is an especially powerful emotion that if not properly channeled, can lead to emotional injury or even physical violence. In the heat of the moment, it is useful to stop and give yourself some time to calm down. Ask yourself, why am I feeling so angry? And what do I want to change about this situation? Aim to understand your feelings and figure out what you need to feel better. It is important to view conflict as an opportunity to practice controlling strong emotions so you can express your needs in a calm and assertive manner. As you struggle to control emotions, it is necessary to acknowledge that sometimes strong reactions occur because personal issues cloud your perception of a situation. This can make it difficult to view the actions of others objectively as neutral events. Projection occurs when you see your own memories, thoughts, and feelings in the mind or behavior of someone else, but fail to recognize it in yourself. In other words, you push something about yourself or your history out of your awareness and instead see it coming from your surroundings. When you feel inflamed by a situation, oftentimes it is because some aspect of your personal history is triggering the strong emotions. For example, if you were seriously let down as a child, you may find that you overreact when people don't do what they promised. When you find yourself becoming emotional over an event or a person's actions, it is important to look inward to see what you can learn about yourself and the reason why you find that person or event so triggering. It may be due to suppressed needs, unresolved aspects of your personal history, or qualities you find to be unacceptable. Viewing a situation objectively, rather than through the lens of emotional projection, will enable you to find a willingness to resolve conflict. In addition to managing your emotions and becoming aware of projections, it is important to broaden your perspective. Think about the role of this particular issue in a broader context. How does this issue impact personal and interpersonal relationships? Are there any financial or legal implications? Consider how the problem will look over a substantial period of time. How does history play into the current issue, and how will the resolution affect the future? Are there additional stakeholders that should be taken into account, and what is their point of view on the situation? When you broaden your perspective on the issue, you may find that you are less caught up in the drama of the scenario that you are able to be more observant and self-aware, and that you are able to think of more creative solutions. Part of broadening your perspective is understanding the feelings and needs of the other person. Developing empathy is a skill that involves building openness and trust with others. The best way to develop empathy with another person is to make sure they feel heard and understood. Active listening is a strategy that involves carefully listening to the other person and trying to verbally reflect their feelings back to them. In order to make sure you're getting it right, you might ask clarifying questions or summarize their viewpoint. Especially if your counterpart is angry, it is important to avoid defending yourself, suggesting solutions, or giving advice right away. By first making sure the other individual feels understood, the tension will diffuse and both parties will be in a position to reason things out together. Once you have your emotions under control and you have gained some perspective on the conflict, 
it is time to think about how to satisfy the needs of the stakeholders. Appropriate assertiveness is a conflict resolution skill that entails stating your feelings and needs in a way that is calm but firm and does not inflame the situation by arousing feelings of defensiveness in the other person. When utilizing appropriate assertiveness, it is helpful to speak in well-constructed I statements. An I statement clearly explains how you feel and what your needs are. It is free of expectations for the other person's behavior and is not a solution to the problem, but merely a conversation starter for conflict resolution. In practicing self-control, empathy, and appropriate assertiveness, you are well on your way to resolving conflict peacefully. Engaging cooperative power means allowing each individual involved in the conflict the dignity of advocating for themselves, taking responsibility for their actions, and responding to the problem. Everyone is treated as equals. Each individual takes responsibility for their part in the disagreement and responds where they can, without trying to defeat, control, or manipulate others. Each person must throw off the assumed roles of persecutor, victim, or rescuer and view themselves as empowered equals, all with the ability to problem-solve. Creative response involves shifting your perspective from seeing a problem to seeing an opportunity for creativity and learning. This conflict resolution skill asks you to see a disagreement as a challenge in which you can explore the needs of others and experiment with creative solutions. The win-win approach aims to change the intention of the argument from attack and defense to cooperation. This skill requires understanding the needs of each person involved in the conflict. Before thinking about solutions, strive to understand each other's needs. Once the needs have been discussed, strive to build solutions that honor those needs rather than denying them. Each individual walks away from the disagreement feeling like they have had their needs met instead of having one winner and one loser. Mapping the conflict is an analytical tool that allows the individuals involved in the conflict to view the whole situation, including everyone's needs and concerns. In order to map the conflict, you might use an oversized piece of paper or a whiteboard to record facts about the conflict. It may or may not be possible to involve the other individuals in this exercise. Begin by defining the issue in a non-biased way that all parties can agree upon and which does not invite a yes or no answer. This issue will be the title of the map and appears in the center of the diagram. Surrounding the issue, write all the names of the stakeholders involved in the conflict. Under their names, write the needs of each person or group and what their motivations are. Follow by recording the fears, concerns, or anxieties of each person or group. Completing a conflict map will allow you to gain new insight into the issue, perhaps finding common ground among stakeholders or identifying needs or concerns that are unique to certain individuals. These discoveries can then be used in the development of options for a solution. Stakeholders may begin by identifying obvious solutions to which all parties can agree. Then, a brainstorming session allows those involved to voice all potential solutions that come to mind without censoring, justifying, or debating. Reaching a consensus might involve finding a completely new way of addressing the problem or maintaining current arrangements but with certain concessions or trade-offs. When selecting an option from amongst a number of possible solutions, Consider whether the solution satisfies the needs of all stakeholders, whether the solution is fair, and whether it is feasible. It may be necessary to try one solution, and then another, to see what works and what does not. In order to accomplish conflict resolution, some negotiation skills are necessary. Negotiation occurs when people in conflict communicate with each other in order to come to a resolution. This may require some preparation in advance of a confrontation, especially in identifying your own needs and the needs of others involved in the conflict. Be clear that your goal is to steer the conversation in a positive direction and to achieve a win-win solution to the problem. The five basic principles of effective negotiation include the following. 1. Be hard on the problem and soft on the person. Remember that you need to attack the problem, not the person. View conflict as an opportunity for greater understanding of others. 2. 
Focus on needs, not positions. By examining the needs of stakeholders, both parties can focus on satisfying those needs instead of focusing on opposing positions on the issue. 3. Emphasize common ground. Figure out what needs or concerns stakeholders share. Perhaps there are more similarities than originally thought. 4. Be inventive about options. Try to think outside the box when approaching tough situations. Perhaps by viewing the problem in a new or unusual way, you can see solutions that didn't originally occur to you. 5. Make clear agreements. It is helpful when making agreements to be clear about the expectations for each party involved. It is also important to establish a clear idea of the intended outcome so that if the solution isn't working, you could try another approach. Occasionally, two disputing parties may not be able to come to a solution on their own. In that case, it may be necessary to involve a neutral third party in the conflict resolution process. Third-party mediation occurs when an impartial third person, called a mediator, helps people in conflict negotiate more effectively. Mediators are objective and validate both sides of the argument, even if they privately agree with one point of view over the other. During the mediation process, the mediator helps the participants to communicate so the needs of each party are clearly understood. Mediators may also aid in brainstorming ideas for a win-win resolution. Generally, the responsibility of solving the problem is left to the stakeholders, but the mediator may help the participants stick to the agreement by drafting a contract for future behavior. Typically, the outcome of mediation leaves the disputing parties most satisfied since they have control over the resolution. If two disputing parties are unable to come to a resolution on their own, or with the help of a mediator, more formal conflict resolution strategies may become necessary. Arbitration occurs when the two sides of a conflict make their case before an impartial third party who serves as a judge. The so-called arbitrator listens to the needs and concerns of each side and then decides how to resolve the conflict. The individuals in conflict do not have control over the arbitrator's decision, but are compelled to live by the ruling. This type of conflict resolution occurs regularly in the United States court system, but may also occur in family or school scenarios where a parent, teacher, or administrator fills the role of arbitrator. When working toward conflict resolution, it is likely that you will use some or even all of these skills. It can be a lot to remember, especially during the tension of a conflict, but if you just focus on developing one skill at a time, you will soon find that you have a wide array of tools in your conflict resolution toolbox. As you begin applying these skills during conflict, you may find that your relationships improve and you end up dealing with fewer conflicts 